whole YouTube series, Reminder Series, back in 2006. And then other people know me for the children's videos, and many people know me for my Half Our Dean project. Over 2,600 people have found the other half and been running this project for about 12 years now. And for the last 10 years, we've been doing live events. We're bringing Muslims together to help people meet each other and in a natural way, no speed dating, none of that nonsense, while staying within the halal boundaries. And Alhamdulillah, it's been quite successful. Our last event in Toronto, we had 57% of the attendees found the match. This is unheard of. We do things differently. So I, I've been trying to tackle issues that we have within the Muslim community in a different way. And Alhamdulillah, our success happens to be very different than everybody else. So I encourage you to try to explore the different things that are out there, again, staying within the halal boundaries and see that if whatever may not be working for you now, maybe there's a better way to doing it. So one of the most common things we get asked uh, that comes up quite a bit, not necessarily for through half our day, but maybe through just general conversation is, how do I get more intimacy? And this is a million dollar question. Like, why do men do what they do? Why do they build these empires? Why do they work so hard? Why do they do all this stuff? What is their main, main motivation? Their main motivation is the opposite gender, pulling in the opposite gender. This is why men do what they do. They're inspired to do what they do. And if there was no females in this world, you'll see a bunch of men doing this. But there are many men that are not doing this. They're doing this, like they're actually working and doing all this stuff because they know men who do nothing and sit there and are not ambitious and do not work hard and do not get educated and do not make the income, they are not likely to get the type of wife that they want to get married or even get married at all. But those who happen to be more successful happen to attract better women and quality sisters. And naturally we know that 90% of the sisters that are right now looking to get married are not marrying 90% of the brothers. In fact, the statistics show they're all chasing 10% of the brothers. And who are those 10%? Those are the ones who happen to be more successful. Now, once these brothers and sisters all get married and everything's going well, and then some things don't go well. And people start having issues and challenges and things you don't hear about. In fact, we never hear khutbahs about intimacy, even though in Islam, all of the stuff was clearly given. Uh, this, this is not something that we as Muslims should shy away from. This is something that we should be sharing and learning from each other. Obviously, not obviously the detail that we're not supposed to talk about, but as far as what our dean says, we should be looking into. But unfortunately, because we've lived within Christian countries, and those Christian countries naturally have an influence even among the Muslims that live among them, people have now, Muslims, look at this type of things about intimacy in a very shy, not shy, but in a shameful way. Like is as that the Christians look at it as more of a sin, but as Muslims, it is not a sin. In fact, you get rewarded when you do it correctly. But the problem is because we don't really look into it very much and understand how the opposite gender functions and what makes them happy and what's making them content, there's a lot of problems within our bedroom. And many people have don't know what to do. There's frustration. Many men who are now all suddenly into marrying a second and third and fourth wife. You say, mashallah, this brother probably has a lot of ambition to provide, but yet he can't even afford the first wife. So where is his motivation coming from? He wants to work twice as hard, three times as hard? No, there's a lack of intimacy. And then he doesn't know what to do. So he says, well, if I'm getting this once a week from this person, if I marry the second one, maybe I get twice a week. Uh, yeah, good luck on that. It doesn't work that way. So I want you guys to think about this. I'm going to talk about different analogies so you guys can kind of like, visualize a little bit, makes a little bit more sense. And I'm gonna to try to explain how men see things and how women see things. So inshallah, it makes a little bit more sense on both sides so we can understand each other. Because when you understand each other, you're more likely to reach the goal that you want to get to. But if you keep trying to do things with your way and your way is just the stuff you see, you're not gonna get very far. Because if you're done, if, you're, if it's working for you right now, so why are you watching this video? <laughs> so I was going to say, okay, let's just break it down from the very, very beginning and talk about how we're very, very different from each other. And let's do a quick job analogy before we we'll go ahead. All right, fellas, brothers, we talk about second, third, fourth, fourth wife, and you're not realizing what other requirements is involved. It's not just intimacy. There's all the other things that are pieces into it. I want you to think about it this way. If let's just say you have a job, and your job is a great job. It's an amazing job. But you just look at your paycheck, and you're like, every... So every two weeks or so, they give you a check after all the hard work you do. And you look at it and you're like, oh, um, excuse me, sir. I bet yes. Um, uh, why is this number so low? 
I, I think there's like a zero that's missing. And they're like, oh, no, let me check that. And they check it and say, oh, uh, that's correct. And they get back to you like, oh, okay. And they're like, what happened? Well, I think I should be getting paid more and I'm not getting paid more. So now you have two options. You can A, go talk to that employer, see what you can do to get more money, work for a raise and stuff like that. Or B, you can go get another job that pays the same, work twice as hard and just get two paychecks. Obviously, the most people would choose the first one. Why would I go get a second job and be like, I lose more time and other things? Well, let me work with the first one, see what's going on. But what most Muslims do, they go and get a second job without telling the first job, said, I got a second job. But you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> first of all, they start making second job jokes with their first job. Hey, boss, what do you think about me if I, if I got a, a second job? And the boss like, well, I don't really like that idea. Well, why would you get a second job when you're already working here? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just joking. <laughs> but if you if you're not uh, if you're not uh, offended, I'm not joking. But if you're offended, I'm joking. <laughs> and the boss is like, you're, why are you acting weird? And his boss never laughs at these second job jokes. So what happens is that you start getting these people. The boss starting to get jealous and concerned and worried. And but what are you talking about in these games that you're playing and blah blah blah? Because you can barely work here. Like you're not even working here very well. <laughs> why would you go get a second job? So, or you go back to the first day, what am I doing wrong? What can I do better here that will give me more pay? Because there's often times if, there, if you can do stuff that's better for your employer, and obviously your wife is not your employer, but you know I'm using the analogy, but in, in this situation, you're more likely to get paid more. And this is the angle that most people don't look at. So what's going on? What's wrong? Well, the first thing I do is understand how an employer thinks versus how an employee thinks. Right? Again, we're using a job analogy, but we're really talking about intimacy. So the little kids are sitting in the room, they're walking around, Mama, Baba, what is Baba Ali talking about? Uh, something about jobs, kids. Don't worry about it. Just keep playing with your toys. Okay, so going back to this again, let's talk about how each side looks at intimacy. All right? So let's just imagine this. Imagine a cup of water. And by the way, when we learn this stuff, it'll help you a lot when it comes to uh, dealing with the opposite gender when you're coming with your wife or with your husband, trying to get them to come to the world that you're trying to see the world in your lenses, inshallah. So let's imagine two cups of water, all right? When the cups of water are full, your spouse, male or female, would want to be intimate. All you have to do is fill up the cup. So the first question you're asking me, Baba Ali, how do I fill up the cup? Easy. For the men, guys, you know your cup is like a faucet. It's turned on. And it's just, 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 just. some people is fast. It's going, and some people are, shh. it's like sweating, right? So that faucet is getting, that cup is being full, right? As the cup gets full, now you are hungry and you have that urge of intimacy and the craving for intimacy, and, this, and then that's it, right? And that's easy. For sisters, oh, how do I get my brother, or my husband to be more intimate? With that? It's much easier for the sisters. So they get the, the men versus the vice versa, even though both sides sometimes have issues, but generally, generally, it's easier because men have that faucet open. And for sisters, let me take explain how for men it works. It works very similar to the hunger. Like you normally get hungry, right? And as soon as you, you're like, imagine during Ramadan and you're getting like the whole day, you haven't eaten food and all you can think about is food. And you're thinking about food everywhere and everything starts smelling like food. And throughout today, you probably haven't smoked too much food, but if this was during Ramadan and you haven't eaten the whole day, you'd be like, someone's making chicken with biryani and potatoes? I smell potatoes. Like, how do you smell this? You're upstairs. And then because you start becoming very sensitive to these things. And that naturally when all these people who are fasting because they can't get married, they start, it's more difficult because these urges are everywhere and all the advertisements and the over-sexualization of society makes it even 10 times more difficult. So there are even more stronger to hold this stuff back. And it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of strength to push back these urges, especially when you're constantly shown food on commercials, on television, everything. And when it comes for F star time, there is no F star time. <laughs> so you don't know when F star is going to be, right? So you naturally think, oh man, when I eat, I can eat like an entire cow. I can eat 10 chickens. I can eat all these different things. And then once you are served your plate of food, you eat like half of it and you're like, I'm full. Just like Ramadan, your stomach shrinks. You think you can marry four wives. And you're not really thinking about it that, hey, it's not everyone can do the same thing. It takes a certain amount of strength 
discipline, responsibility, other things. But, but now you have to think to yourself, what do I craving? You think your craving is more than it actually is. So when you're getting married, your wife is not functioning the same way. So these water keeps dripping, 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 and it gets full. And as soon as the water tips over, which is your satisfaction of intimacy, stuff like that, you know, brothers, you are not ready in the next second to go back to intimacy again. You think you will, but as soon as it happens, you're resetting, and now you need to, you're okay for a while. Like all the urges are out, and now you're, the water starts dripping again. Some people, as I said, you're faster than others, right? But every single time you need this. And sisters, this is how men think. It's the same way just, oh, but you ate yesterday. But you ate last week. Boy, every day I want to eat. That's how men think, right? So they're thinking, thinking about their next meal, right? Now, on the flip side, brothers, let me explain how sisters work. And this, this cup that I gave for the brothers is nailed down to the, to the shelf. It doesn't tip over very easily at all. There's not much sisters you can do. If you get the man angry, your husband angry, he'll still be intimate with you. If you had a bad day, he'll still be intimate with you. If you had that, he'll still be intimate with you. Why? Because, oh, I've been, I haven't eaten the whole day and I had a bad day. You think he's not going to eat dinner? Of course he wants to eat dinner. He doesn't enjoy it as much, but he still wants to eat dinner. Now for sis brothers, now let me explain how sisters work. They have a cup as well, but their cup is not like our cup. It's not nailed down to the shelf. This cup drips and is at a much slower rate than yours does. They still have a natural urge, but not, they don't have testosterone in their body, not at the percentage as men do. Men have 90% more testosterone than a woman does, right? Now, again, we're not talking about all men or all women. So there's some women that have more higher libido than men do. But as women, the, this thing is dripping, but at a slower rate. But there's other things that you do that makes all this water start dripping. Like what? When you love her, when you are kind to her, when you flirt with your wife, keyword wife, when you are showing uh, acts of uh, like the love language, it's a different depending on who your wife is and what type of love language she understands. When you do things that makes her feel loved and cared for and makes her feel beautiful and amazing. That's something it's like, it's like taking water and just dripping it in and taking it in and like you can get a bucket and you're filling it up, filling it in. And when that thing gets full, she's ready to go. The problem is, unlike us men, that water could be tipped like that. You say something about her weight. You say something about her age. You say something that really hurts her feelings is literally taking the cup and just spilling it like that. Unlike you, you're like, okay, I'm ready to go. I said something, we argued, and now we're, we were planning all this stuff for tonight. And she's like, no, I'm done. What? And of course, what are you gonna do? I am going to, oh, let me see. Oh, I found a hadith uh, regarding the, uh, the angel is cursing you, and uh, you have to do this and this and this. I said, okay, fine. Go ahead, do what you want. And you're like, well, this is no fun. Hurry up, just get it over with. And like, uh, I don't want to do this. They, they, that's awkward. Oh, well, what about the hadith? Like, yeah, uh, you're right. Okay. And that's not what you want either, brother. Yes, you're hungry, but you don't eat a meal like, like that. You want the other side to enjoy together, right? So you say, okay, how do I get her to enjoy? So it's not just making her force into it or feel guilty into it, but how can I get her to enjoy? Because when your wife enjoys, and you enjoy, then it will be frequent. But if she's not enjoying, you're not gonna enjoy either because this is naturally something that's wired into men. This is why we want our wives to be happy because we feed off of that happiness, not just inside the bedroom, but overall in general. And if our wives are not happy and we don't feel like something, like we feel like something's missing between us. You know what I'm talking about, brothers. So now we think to yourself, okay, how do I get this wife happy? How do I make her happy in the bedroom so she wants more? Because then she's like, oh, more water, more water. So small things, small things. As we know from the Hadith of the Prophet, so some before you become intimate with your wife, it is encouraged for foreplay, right? And you do things throughout the day to build it up, right? And you, and, and again, you're, you're spilling that water into that cup. And you have to be very careful. This cup, again, is not nailed to the, to the shelf. Pay attention to it because don't come out with all these random second wife jokes when you know she's sensitive to that. Don't talk about her weight if she's sensitive to that. Don't talk about her age if she's sensitive to that. Don't do stuff that's going to self-sabotage yourself, brothers. <laughs> you know, she's not going to function like you. No matter if her entire cup is full, again, when a wife is angry with you, literally it's almost impossible for her to be intimate with you. And she will not enjoy it because her emotions 
are wired into her in a different way. She flows with those emotions. She goes with that thing. And that's, by the way, what makes her a woman. All that femininity that you enjoy about her, all those things that she has that you really are attracted to is tied into her emotions, things that we are not tied into as well, right? There are certain things that women find attractive in us that they naturally don't have as much. For example, men who are confident, women are more even attracted to, especially if she lacks that confidence. Men who are very decisive, many women are indecisive. So they lack, they lack that piece that you have, so they're attracted to that, a man who's decisive, a man who knows what he wants. They always use the word independent, right? The reason why they keep throwing that word out is because they're attracted to men who are independent, independent from like being a follower, independent from their parents, and they can do things on their own. They're attracted to those things, right? So you have to think to yourself, what can I do to also make her attractive in the bedroom? So now you say, okay, alhamdulillah, so let me think, let me think, let me think. Well, you don't have to think, even think very much because it's only very given to you. Okay, so let me explain to you guys. I know it sounds like for some people, we, this is common sense. And for other people, I call it Islamic sense, like common sense, but for Muslims, it's kind of like how women are. We just talked about it. it, it the the uh, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi talks about before you go to your wife for, to be intimate with her, send her a messenger and send her a messenger. And people are like, what do you mean, messenger? <laughs> so I got to send some guy to go talk to her or some sister to go talk to her. No, no, no. A messenger is kiss and words. Like she, this is how you intellectually stimulate her. If you, this all in here, guys, you know, you're like this. This is visual. This is why, like, if your wife wearing laundry and other things, it's like, dip, 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 all this stuff goes off, right? So, you know, which laundry are you going to wear that your wife will, ooh, you have to be the same. It's not going to be the same reaction as she, you're going to have for her. But for her, it's this. So, we, we always talk about the challenges that brothers have, many brothers have with um, pornography, right? Because this visual simulation is just messing things up because they pull you in with that. They know this is going to get you, they pull you in. Now, uh, yes. There are some sisters that deal with that too, but the majority that deal with their brothers, right? But one thing we never ever talk about, and I see it when I take flights, because I do, as you guys know, I travel around doing these matrimonial events. I'm taking flights, I'm staying there. And while I'm on my computer doing myself, the person next to me is, what's she doing? The female is reading uh, her version of pornography, which is this, you know, those books, erotic things, like uh, the man with the no, has no shirt, and he's like in the wind. And his wife is holding on to it. Not his wife, I don't know who she is. She's holding on to his arms and she's looking up to him. And he's like, and then it, it, she's sitting there and like, you know, she's graphic, she's all into it. That's pornography for her. Now, why is this, why do women generally read all these books while men are generally into pornography? This is two versions of pornography because this is a written version, which just uses her imagination. Because women, if they're intellectually simulated, and you get them all into that stuff. The, and obviously with you, not with this goofy goofball who's doing the, <laughs> who's this guy? But I'm just saying like, you have to be that one that intellectually stimulates her. And you build it throughout the day, right? So when you do that and her cup gets full and she is happy, now she's looking forward to it again. Now, to be fair to the brothers a little bit, because some things, the brothers are very confused, after the whole thing is over and your wife had an amazing time, then you're like, okay, Baba Ali, tomorrow she's not thinking about it. What's going on? What did I do wrong? Well, this is a funny thing. And this is my opinion, take it with a grain of salt. I personally think women enjoy, those who do are, are having a positive experience for intimacy. If the man has a positive experience and the woman has a better positive experience, I think the women are going to enjoy it far more than the brothers do. Why is that? is because, I don't know, we're wired differently, functionally differently. When a woman's body is ready to go, I mean, it can keep going. Men don't function that way. It peaks and it stops. And you have to reset and peak and stop. That's how it works. So this is visualized, just going back to the common sense, Islamic sense, there is a microwave and there's an oven. Men are the microwave. Beep, 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 beep. It's already ready to go. What? In 10 seconds, 15 seconds, he's ready to go. He wasn't even thinking about intimacy. It's like a microwave in less than a minute, he's ready to go. Now you're, you don't know any better and you get married, you're like, okay, beep, 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 beep. And why is my wife not ready to go? What's wrong with this button? What's wrong with this? Well, first of all, brother, you're talking like a robot. I am not talking like a robot. Yes, you are. You're thinking like a man. Okay, <laughs> she's an oven. What do you do with the oven? You don't throw a pizza in there. You preheat it. You wait. How long do you have to wait for? 
you have to wait 15, 20 minutes to build it up. Build it up. So if you are together in the bedroom, you build it up. Nothing yet. Just kiss her, love her, spend time with her, whisper words to her, let her fantasize. You know, tell her, build up a scenario of things where you go and she, let her visualize. She will simulate herself far more than you can simulate her. All through her own imagination. Where are we? We're on the beach. And where are we on the island? Blah, 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 blah. Use your imagination. Take her there, right? And she will, it will, her body will start preparing itself. So when her body is ready to go, she's far more likely to enjoy it than you just throwing an oven, a pizza into the oven and just expecting, why is this thing burnt? The bottom is burnt, the top of it's burnt, and the whole thing is not even cooked properly because you're treating it like a microwave. It's not a microwave. You know what's a microwave? You, you are the microwave. <laughs> it functions differently. So now you're like, okay, I get it. I sweet talk her throughout the day. I do all these things. And then when I'm in the bedroom, now what about me? How do I make this positive experience? Well, this takes practice. No matter how much this society tries to teach you that, oh, this is, what's gonna, this is what intimate is going to be like. The first time you guys be intimate together, it's be probably pretty clumsy. Things are going wrong. It's, it's, like, it's like me putting you in a, in a um, they take, they take in a flight. I put you in a plane and says, man, this plane. And you're like, <laughs> how do you run this thing? There's a hundred buttons. That's the woman's body, by the way. There's a hundred things and you're maneuvering it and you're trying to balance it. And guess what you do, 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 and you crash. And she's like, uh, is that it? Are we over? And you're like, I, I think so. I don't know what happened. So, oh. And they're like, man, don't look down upon yourself because this is normal. With more practice, you'll get better at whatever you're doing. And you go back to it and get better and better. And what you have to do is when I press this button, what happened? She didn't respond very well. Well, I thought that she would like it. Well, I press this button and it goes, oh, wow, she liked that one. And she goes, this. so you are learning because there's no manual here, guys. You are learning by listening and speaking and interacting what she likes, what she doesn't like, and every plane is different. And then after a while, eventually you'll land your plane. And she lands her plane, she is on cloud nine. She's like, go again. Like what? Go again, again, again. And she wants to go again and again and again and again until you don't want to stop. What are you talking about? So that tells me that's one of my reasons I think they enjoy it way more than men do. As much as you enjoy it, they enjoy it more. There are the ones that ask you never to stop. When do men ever say, we don't, we're never going to stop? <laughs> we will beg you, please don't let this plane ever, let it keep going around. And eventually we're going to land. I want to land for sure, but let's just fly around for a while. We just took off. What men do is they just take off and they just crash land like a rocket ship. You press the, how's a rocket ship go, by the way? You press the button. And press it. And you're done. That's a rocket ship. But women are playing. They don't fly like that. They take off. And you guys know, as you take off on any flight, they say, all right, put your seatbelts on. Uh, no uh, electronics for the first 10,000 feet. And as we get, uh, once we get to, uh, this is your Bob Ali, captain speaking, once we get to 10,000 feet, then take out your electronics and we'll start giving you guys some desserts and all the blah, 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 blah. That's the plane too. As she takes off, and that's the intimacy foreplay part, you can't take off like this. You take off like this. <laughs> and as you take off like this and you're building up, building up, that plane, once it gets to the altitude that it needs to go to, is going woo, super fast and enjoying and doing and flying. It doesn't want to land. It begs you, please, pilot, please do not land. We want to land safely, but please do not land. By the way, statistics show 10 to 15% of planes never land. Okay, that's a different statistic for a different time. But what we're talking about here is how do we make sure this whole experience is going to be really, really positive. And as I just mentioned, because I said so quickly, let's just make sure I cover this, is you listen. You, again, say everything within the halal boundaries. You listen. You see what she enjoys, what she doesn't enjoy. Focus on what she's enjoying. Would you figure out what you're doing right? Take mental notes. Continue doing this way. If it's not working, don't do that way anymore. <laughs> she doesn't like this. Some people like lighter. Some people like more aggressive. Some people more like this. Everyone is different. See what she enjoys. And if she enjoys, trust me, she's going to come to you next week and say, hey, uh, how's flight school? Let's, let's go for another uh, plane trip. <laughs> you're like, oh, Baba Ali, it worked. And you're celebrating. And yeah, that's how it works. But when we don't know and you don't like and the flight doesn't want to take off anymore and you're sitting at the, at the airport and in the hangar, you have the plane and you bought a brand new plane. You worked so hard for it. You worked your job and you saved money and you paid for a wedding and the maher and everything. And the plane sits there 
in the hangar and there's no pilots. And you're wondering, what should I do? And some of you are like, maybe I should buy a second plane. <laughs> so you guys see what I'm saying? You guys see what I'm saying? So for sisters, it's much easier for you because you don't have to maneuver a hundred different things to make your husband happy. It is literally a rocket ship. It's almost impossible for the husband not to be happy in the bedroom. But I will give you some tips if you want to increase his libido to make it more often that he would enjoy. There are certain things that men like and sometimes men don't say it. The reason why they don't say it because they are they sometimes concerned of the reaction of their wife or what are you gonna say and stuff like that. Men really, really enjoy it at home when you dress nicely for them. When you dress around the house nicely for them. So when you are dressed up in like you're fully covered in the club and hijab at home and there's nobody at home except you and him, he's like, why are you constantly covered with everything? Like I only see your eyeballs at home. I understand if you're out, but why are you like this? Well, I feel comfortable. Well, I feel like I'm married to a ninja at home. And when no one's throwing those little spots, I'm like, oh, okay. And then he doesn't have visual stimulation. See women, they need that verbal stimulation to keep them going. He needs visual stimulation from you. And then when you do get eventually to the bedroom, what, again, you're wired differently. So for him, laundry works. And let me tell you why it works. There's something that's programmed into the men's mind that they like variety. You know, all these men who talk about second, third, fourth wife, it's this variety that they're attracted to. Men are not necessarily wired the same way, right? So what the men are naturally wired to have different females. So what you can do to, to, to click into that part to satisfy that checkbox is when you dress in different lingerie, in different outfits, that fantasy part of him checks. And when you check that, it's much, much easier. Now, brothers, let me give you some tips on what you can do for your wife. Women have this certain thing every day that resets. I tell my wife, it is the worst bank in the world. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, you are the, if you were a bank, you'd be the worst bank in the world. Every single day, I go and I take my phone and I check my, uh, if, I, if you're an app and you're in my banking app and I click it to see how much is my, in che my checking account, it would say zero. And I'll be very confused because yesterday I deposited 50 pounds or $50, and there is no money in it. And yes, because every day she'll say to the bank, hi, I'm the bank. Um, I see you have a problem, so I'm here to answer your questions. I say, yes, I do have a question. I deposited $50, 50 pounds into my account yesterday. There's, it says zero. So yes, that's how our bank works. I'm like, well, how does, what, what, wait, wait, what? So yes, this is how every single day, no matter how many times you say I love you, and I appreciate you, and thank you for everything you're doing, it resets every day. So you have to constantly make these deposits to keep this bank happy, otherwise you're gonna close your account. So what happens, <laughs> what happens is you're like, okay, why would anyone invest in this bank? Because this bank does something that your bank doesn't do right now. I'm not talking about interest, but whenever I put any type of deposit into this bank account, they multiply it in ways in I can't imagine and they give it right back to you in ways that you cannot do yourself. That's what makes us attracted to our, our women, our wife, right? So this is what makes it different. If I, I can give my, I can build a structure called a house and work so hard and purchase it and here's the pipe to work, here's my signature. And I come in, it's four white walls and a roof. My wife makes that house into a home. I can't do that. It's something that's wired into her. So when I show love to her and compassion to her and appreciation to her, she takes all that, multiplies it and gives it to me in dividends in ways that have nothing to do with the bank account. But in all these other accounts, I'm like, what is this? Here's your breakfast. I didn't ask for it. And I did this for you. And I took care of this for you. And then she wants more intimacy. She wants to do everything she can to make you happy. And these are the parts we don't realize. We think it's just everything's in a box. This is intimacy. This is this. And this is this. No, if you find ways to go above and beyond to make her happy, to make her feel loved, she'll naturally want to be intimate. And she's wired that way. But it's not the natural hunger that you have. And that's the problem. We think the way we do, and they think the way they do, and there's very little communication to discuss, why do you think differently? Or do you even think differently? And we, we try to counter all the problems with the way we would want to solve it. So if I can't fix this problem, I'll just go, I'll just go get a second one. That's not gonna fix it. Now, I'm not against a second wife thing or a third wife thing, but if it's for the wrong reason, right? Make sure it's the instinct to provide and to take care of, not just, okay, I can't figure out my first wife, so let me go marry a second. That's not, that's not how it works. Make sure your first wife is taken care of. 
Make sure your second wife is taken care of. Make sure all the wives are taken care of. But for the record, I only have one wife. So, and I'm always one wife person. But I'm telling you, a lot of times I see these people chasing these things. And when you really, really dig down to it, it's the intimacy issue. It's the million dollar question as a topic of this room. How do I get more intimacy? And uh, believe it or not, I can guarantee you 90% of brothers have never had this discussion with their wife. What can I do to get more intimacy from you? And many sisters, they don't know how to communicate it just pr properly. Well, you just have to be this, and you make something very general and very vague, and men don't think that way. Well, I give him clues, he doesn't understand your clues, right? It, it's funny that they have this, the non-Muslims, they say, if a man is interested in a woman, he, uh, the woman um, if the woman is interested in a man, she has to give three verbal clues, three of them, before he catches, with the hope that he'll catch one of them. So when you're at home, sister, and you're married to your husband, and you tell him something, he may not catch it. You have to do things multiple times, not because he's not paying attention, it's because his brain is not wired to be paying attention to details. You see details, he doesn't. Well, I did this, my, I moved my body this way, and that tells him that I don't like it. No, say, I don't like what you're just doing right now. Or I like when you do this. Men need to be, well, why does he have to be told directly? Because his brain is wired, he's a very simple brain. He can do things with his brain that you can't do with yours, and you can do things with your brain that you can't do with his. We're just all built us differently. So the way he communicates, his operating system communicates, he has to be literally told this, 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 even though it's clearly obvious for you, right? So sometimes when a sister is talking to another sister and she doesn't like something or like something, she's like, mm, or she's like, she does like the smallest thing and the other sister picks it up, right? So they try to communicate the same way with your husband, that's gonna be a problem. He doesn't pick it up. He doesn't know when you're mad. He doesn't know when you're happy. He doesn't know it's like sometimes what, what you're frustrated or you came back, but how many times does a woman be able to pick that up? And brothers, you know what I'm talking about. If it's not your wife, maybe it was your mom when you used to come home and everything was perfect. Uh, I mean, and, and she know that you had a good day today. Like, How do you know? And you come home one day and you haven't said a word to her. All you say is, Salaamu Alaikum. What happened? What do you mean what happened? Something happened today. I didn't say anything. Something happened and you're frustrated, I can tell. I didn't say a word. Why? Because the smallest detail that you don't even realize that you're giving off, she can pick up. And it's the same thing. When women have issues with their husband, they realize there's a certain things that you're not telling them, something's pick, they're picking up, blah, 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 and they're picking up stuff that you don't even communicate it. Now what's happening is the, the female thinks that you can do the same thing. So when she's frustrated and mad, or even in the bedroom, sends you signals, she's hoping you're picking the stuff up. And when you're not, then she's like, oh, he's ignoring it. And he's selfish and he's frustrated. Da, 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 and then she starts resenting you. And this comes back to miscommunication again. And that's my two cents about intimacy. So I don't know if anyone has any questions, but I hope that you guys got some insight in, in some of these things. And inshallah, if you did, I ask you to hopefully um, keep me in your du'as and if you find it beneficial, inshallah. But you guys want me to come on board and tell you guys how to get more intimacy. Yes. And it works. It Jazakallah khair. And that was a big two cents. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. I think, um, you know, gave people a lot of food for thought, MashaAllah. Um, and yeah, lots of great analogies. Make it really easy for people to kind of get what you're saying. And I think, you know, that you've actually echoed some of the themes that have been, you know, brought to the, to the forefront by other speakers, communication, for example, you know, the difference between men and women and how they process things, etc. So, alhamdulillah, yani, I think we, we have a theme going. So that's great, mashallah. Jazakallah kullu khair. Before you go, brother, I would love for you to let people know how they can take up that offer that you mentioned in the marriage conversation. Because I remember you mentioned that for UK people, they have been really excited by the success stories from Half Dean, and they would love to come and take advantage of your generous offer, but they don't know how. Could you tell them, please, inshallah? Yes, yeah, so last time we were on our call, for those who missed it, uh, we were just, we had a distinct plan, by the way. So what happened is we just had our call, and then somehow in the, during the conversation, um, I said, you know what? Let's do something for the UK people. Let's give them a year on Half Our Dean for free. Um, and we said, let's, let's give it a shot. Now, I didn't, before that whole conversation, we didn't have planned this thing out at all. And after the call was done, it's okay, because otherwise I'll have a link ready. I'll have something like, hey, go to this website and then you get your year free and stuff like that. We didn't do it. So I tell you, just go to my IG. And I didn't know we we're going to be doing it today. I think we, you mentioned it in conversation, but I, I just remembered that you did. <laughs> so um, I would have to go back to the IG thing again. 
but this time we'll have to cap it at a certain point because I realize that some people watch the video at different times. Uh, so some of you may be watching this video on July 30th, which is the date today, and some of you may be watching it in the future. So we'll, we'll keep it open for at least a week. So if you contact me in the next week on my Instagram, uh, you can catch me at Real Baba Ali uh, on Instagram, and I will give you a year free. Now, I want to be transparent. We are not necessarily in the UK market. We are basically in the US and Canada market. Now, we are trying to one day come to the UK, but what the challenge is for the UK is when you come to the website and you see only like 200 people or 300 people there, you're like, oh, there's not enough people here, so I leave. So if that doesn't work for you, uh, then don't take the offer. It doesn't really make sense, right? Some people say, look, I've tried people here. It hasn't really worked out. I want to explore elsewhere. Like my, for example, many of you guys may or may not know, my wife is from the UK. And my first success story is a husband from the US, actually from Los Angeles, and his wife is from London, UK. So I've, we've had multiple situations where people happen to be overseas or different countries, and they, it worked out very successfully for them. Now, that may not be for you, so it may not make sense for you, but I'm hoping, inshallah, our, our goal is to eventually come to the UK, but I want to do things a little bit differently than everybody else has done it. And one of the ways I'm doing things differently, inshallah, is to do matrimonial events. Now, I know you're wondering, okay, we already have matrimonial events. No, you don't. You have speed dating events, which are not designed for marriage. Those things are designed for dating, right? And this is why a lot of these Muslims, they go out on dates and stuff like that. These were designed for people who want to meet in a three-minute, quick, surface level, see each other physically, see if you're attracted to them, and then try to pursue marriage for them, which is ridiculous. It doesn't work. This is why most people come back with horror stories and not success stories. When I throw my numbers out of what kind of events we had, the lowest rate that I remember that we've had this year was 48% of the events that we've, we've done. 48% of our attendees found a match. Now, if I come and give that to any speed dating organization, they'll say that's impossible. We don't barely get 10% or 5%. In fact, they don't even know what their percentage is. We know all the data and all the stats and we figure things out and we're able to capture these things and we keep tweaking things. We don't use speed dating. There's no interviewing. There's no brother sitting there and your sister sitting there and you're asking each other these questions and the person's interrogating the other person, the other person's sweating, the chaperone over there with a the stick. Okay, what'd you say? There's none of that stuff. <laughs> so this is why the way, this is why a lot of these men don't go to these events. Why would I want to go to a, an event and get interrogated by a bunch of chaperones? I don't, I don't even know who you are yet. And you're grilling me in three minutes. I don't want to go. What we do is we attract men. We attract marriage-minded men and get me to how much we attract them. They get on flights, they book hotels, they get Ubers, and they come to our events. In fact, nearly 25% of our attendees people are people who travel as far as the UK, believe it or not. And you're like, what? They came all the way down from the UK to the US? They say, yes, they do. And they come from Canada all the time. And I'm in Los Angeles, by the way. We've had events in Chicago and different parts of the US and in Canada, and many people travel. The last event I did in Canada, in Toronto, a sister said, I came all the way from Pakistan for this event. Now you're wondering, okay, Baba Ali, what is going on here? When you do things differently, you will have different results. And when people are getting married and there's success after success after success, everyone's learning, where are these events? Can I go and experience this? The problem is that there's nobody else doing it. <laughs> I'm the only one that runs these type of events. Every single other organization does speed dating or some form of it, and it doesn't work. And I don't know why they follow it like a sunnah, but they do. And they'll never do, go away from it, even though it doesn't work. I don't know why. Well, one reason is because it's very profitable. Speed dating is very easy. All you have to take is take people's money, give them a seat, even though you know they have zero chance. We don't do that. Only about 27% of the people who apply for our events get a seat. About 73% chance. So if you try to come to my London event, I'm trying to do a, whole, a London event later this year, inshallah, for the first time in 12 years. This will be our first ever London event. If you try and you listen to this, I'm excited about Bali, where do I sign up? There's a 73% chance you won't get in. Every single person can pick. And we do it in, a, in people like, oh, this is the hardest event to get into. It is the hardest. That's why people fly. They fly to, and don't be surprised. If this was like, to get, give you a comparison, let's just say our US events were UK events. I want you to imagine how, when I'm telling you people fly in, I want you to imagine we're doing an event in London and you ask his brother, where you're from? He says, France. And this person's from Belgium, and this person's from Spain. This guy came from Italy, Muslim guy from Italy. The other guy came from where? Like, what? You got four got people from Switzerland. Are you serious? You guys all came and flew into Heathrow, and then that's an expensive flight with the, with, if you add all the hotel and the Ubers and all this stuff, yeah. And he came all this way to meet you. 
and you all complain about, I can't find any serious Muslim people, this is how serious they are. That's why people pay. And what they pay for my events, by the way, is double of what they pay for speed dating. Speed dating, you know what they do for you? They say, hey, come on in. We got some dinner for you. We got a three course meal. We got all these different things for you. And then why do they do all that stuff? Because the thing doesn't work, so they feed them. <laughs> feed them, at least they'll get happy. And they go home uh, with a horror story, but they got their stomachs full. We don't even have food. Like, we don't have dinner. We don't even need to give dinner. Uh, you don't have dinner? We don't have dinner. We just have some finger food, some appetizers, maybe some drinks. That's it. People who pay for our events, they're not coming for that. They're coming to get married. You want to go there? Go to a restaurant. I'm sure with 50 pounds, you get a much better meal than you get at a speed dating event. <laughs> right? So... Our goal is to help you guys get married. The reason I came on today's show, inshallah, is not to promote my product at all. My whole goal was here to help you guys, with those who are married, to stay married. And one of the ways to stay married is to make sure the bedroom things are going well. And if things are going well, usually in the bedroom, as my grandmother used to say, uh, she used to say, if everything's good in the bedroom, everything's good in the marriage. She was a very simple person, but it's, obviously it's not that simple, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, but for the code, um, you can contact me through the Instagram. I will leave it for at least a week. So you have until August 7th. So if you contact me on Instagram, I will reopen this again. We did close it out for a while, but we reopen it again for you guys, inshallah, because I love what you guys are doing here. And by the way, I don't benefit from it. Um, all those people who are joining my um, one year free on thing, I don't, I give you full access. Like I'm not charging you anything. If you decide to stay on, then you, your subscription starts one year from now. But if you, if you cancel within the one year, will remove you. Now, if you, the only reason why I've been hesitating to do this, by the way, again, is because sometimes when something is free, people will join. And if they don't use it for a few months, then the account just sits there and looks like someone's not using it. And, and that's not good for the entire website. One thing we do with our website is we want to fill, I don't want a million people like Muzzmatch and Minder and Salams and stuff like that. I don't want a million. I want like a thousand or 2000 marriage minded people who are serious. If you're like want to do dating and you just want to be like whatever nonsense, Go to some other website. I don't need you on my website. And who, who's going to tell you that, by the way? I'm looking for the marriage people. I'm looking for quality. I'm looking for that. Six, I want 2,600 success stories again and again and again. That's what I'm looking for. I don't need a million people. This is not a money-making machine for me. This is a success machine for me. And for anyone who comes to my events and has seen the way I do things a bit different, uh, you know, compatibility, all that kind of stuff, you can tell this guy's passionate about what he does. It's not like he's in there counting money, like whatever. It's different. The mindset's different, and I'm, I'm chasing success like the way people chase money, right? I'm, I'm tweaking it. I'm trying to make things better, and uh, inshallah, hopefully, inshallah, I get to see you guys one day in London. For those who are in the London and in Canada, we're having an event on September. If you actually follow me on my Instagram, uh, you'll see where things are. I'm not here to advertise, but it's over there. So I want to make sure we focus on this topic here, inshallah. But for your guys who are listening to this, again, I'm not offering this anywhere except for this program. If you're listening to this, there's a huge benefit because you just made yourself $84. And that is the price that someone's gonna pay for an annual subscription. Every single person that comes out everywhere else is pretty much paying, except for the people who are right now listening. So if you're in the UK and you're listening right now, you have, you're one of the few exceptions that are actually getting a paid membership. Now you're getting a, a 10 day or a 30 day or a 60 day, 90 day. You're getting a one year membership. That's plenty of time. And again, I don't benefit. If it works for you, what are you gonna do? You're gonna get married and you're gonna leave the website. I don't make a penny. If it doesn't work for you, what are you going to do? You're going to leave the website. So I don't win either way, right? There's no money coming in my pocket. I'm doing this for Naomi Roberts because her program is amazing. And what she's doing is amazing. And I want to make sure you guys benefit from it, inshallah, somehow for me to be beneficial for you guys. And if it works for you guys, inshallah, keep me in your du'as. Again, we only have a few hundred people from the UK. Our numbers are low, but hopefully with a lot of these people using it, maybe you guys all who are watching the show will meet each other. And maybe some things will come out of that. So hopefully that helps, inshallah.